Hey everyone, Brendan Finch from Inner Orbit here, where all we do is think of ways for students to make sense of novel phenomena through assessments and activities. In this video, I'm going to walk you through the K-12 progressions, where we look at how ideas progress from kindergarten all the way to 12th grade, so you can be more intentional about your lesson planning and help to remediate students where they need some help. I bet you're most familiar with the NGSS through the performance expectations, which blend the dimensions of the DCI, the SAP, and the Kroskin concept together. Now the PEs give us these performances that we expect students to perform. Yeah. And this is really helpful for what we expect them to do in class right now. But what if they can't do the things that they're expected to do in class right now? That is where the K-12 progressions come in. Yay! These are these appendices of the NGSS that kind of detail what we want students to be doing from kindergarten and as they progress into the end of high school. Now up here, we're looking at one of the K-12 progressions. I'm gonna call your attention to two different things. So first, there are grade level bands. K-2, 3, 5, 6, 8, and 9, 12 are the different bands that these performances are broken up into. The goal isn't for students to be able to do this one thing during sixth grade, but the expectation is at the end of the six, eight grade level band that students can do these things that are listed here. And those things are called elements. They're the bullet points within each grade level band. They break down the specific performances for that grade level band, and we can trace their development over time, which is pretty cool. The best way to see how these work is to dive into some specific examples of SCPs and DCIs and cross concepts. So first, let's look at developing using models. So in K2, students just need to understand that there's a model and there's a process and that they're different. In 3.5, it gets more complex. They need to identify limitations of models. At the 6.8 level, they need to evaluate limitations of a model for proposed object or tool. And then in 9.12, they have to evaluate the merits and limitations of two different models of the same tool, process, or mechanism in order to decide which one best fits the evidence or design criteria. So if your students at high school are struggling with comparing two different model types, walk back to 6.8, where they just need to evaluate the limitations of that model. If they struggle with evaluating the limitations of a model, then walk back to 3.5, where they identify those limitations. Now diving into the DCIs, we can look at PS1A, which is all about structure and properties of matter. These progress as well in the same way where students walk from K2 and they just understand that matter has properties. In 3.5, they understand that matter is made of particles and that the properties of matter can be used to identify it. At 6.8 now, students need to understand states of matter, phase change, molecules and atoms. And then at the 9-12 level, they get into subatomic particles and forces, electrical fields, and all that good stuff. So again, if your students are struggling with those subatomic forces and particles, let's walk it back to molecules and atoms and conservation of matter. Yay! Finally, let's dive into a cross-cutting concept to kind of poke around in there. Now, the cross-cutting concept pattern starts in K2, where students just recognize that there are patterns and you can observe them. In 3.5, it gets more complex, where students classify things due to their similarities and differences. At the 6-8 level, we get into macroscopic and microscopic patterns and the relation between microscopic things and what we see in the macroscopic world. And in 9-12 now, students need to observe patterns in systems at different scales and decide what patterns can be used as evidence for causality in supporting explanations. Much more complex. If students are struggling with tying causality to those different levels, let's go back and just compare macro and micro. And if they're struggling with that, then we can walk back another level to just classifying things by their similarities and their differences. Yay! If you want to practice some of the things that we just talked about, we have a link in the description that you can click on and download an activity called Connect the Dots, where you can trace an idea from its seedling at K2 into its expansion and complex development in 3, 5, and 6, 8, and then blossoming into a beautiful flower of science at the high school level. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, please like it and subscribe to our channel and leave us a comment below to let us know how you plan to use the K-12 progressions in your own lessons to help scaffold up for students. Thanks for watching and have a beautiful day.